How's it going, guys? I'm Jeff. I'm Alyssa. And welcome back to the Real Life Podcast, where we talk about faith, culture, and answer your questions. We're so stoked you guys are here again. It's been fun to start up the YouTube channel and the and post these on Facebook again. For those listening on audio, because like any podcast, maybe except maybe unless you're Joe Rogan or something, most of you guys are listening on audio. But if you do want to watch, the Real Life Podcast has its own YouTube channel. So just go search Real Life Podcast on YouTube. Should be the first thing that comes up. Or I post these uh, on my Facebook page as full episodes as well. Just Jefferson Bethke, the Facebook page. Everything gets posted on Thursday. The audio, the YouTube, and the Facebook video. Um, and let us know if you're watching on video. I zoomed in a little bit more. I changed the frame. I kind of like this a little bit better. I don't know. Let me know if you like this better than I think last week I zoomed out and pointed down a little bit more. Camera people are the only people that care about that. Anyways, <laughs> uh, how are we doing today, babe? How are we doing? We're doing good. How are mm-hmm. you doing? Tell the people what you did today. Well, I think kind it's of like, monumental. I think it's like month 10 in Corona. Um, I'm starting to go gray. I'm starting to... No, yeah. So the last two days have been a big day. Yeah. Yesterday, guys, we're going to get to the... We'll get to all the spiritual stuff. Y'all need to chill. Y'all can chill. I, we're going to get there. But now we're just going to talk about fun stuff for a second. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Who runs this show? We do. <laughs> um, Actually, Jeff does. I still don't know what we're talking about today. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the last two days, guys, have been monumental. Why? Tell us, babe. Tell us why. Well, no, they're your stories. Huh? They're your stories. That is true. Okay, so I've been getting into... I spearfished like five years ago with you, right? Yes, let's keep this on record. I, I actually debate Bethy what you're about to say, was but yeah. the first one to take Jeff spearfishing, and I was the one to catch a fish. Okay, so no. Granted, it you know, was th- like this big. This is a very... This is, so this is... That's there's, true. There's got to be some psychology study in here. So I would not tell the story like that. What I would tell the story is I was visiting you in Hawaii. Yes. And the person you worked for, the youth pastor, said, how about I take you and Alyssa spearfishing? Because no, no. neither of you have been. And Because he wanted to get to know you. I know, but like you didn't take me spearfishing. But I did because he wouldn't have taken you if no, it wasn't for me. No, 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 no. Guys, how would... So now that I've kind of just said my side and her side, like... Would you say that's her taking us spirit, me spirit vision, or would you say that's yes, the he guy was on who actually? Yes, my territory. He was visiting me. But you don't fish. You don't spear fish. You'd never been before either. He had. He had been a bunch. I know, but he and he and said, I, "Let me take both you guys." And he and I had been talking about it, and so he's like, "Hey, when Jeff comes, we should go. I'll take you." So he took us, but it was my invite. It was through me. <laughs> and let's just okay. Is that a meme or something? Where you go, okay, no, well, no, 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 no. <laughs> regardless, I was the one to catch a fish. No, no. So back to my side of the story. And what happened with you? You no, lost this. You broke the spear. And no, we had to go I, but buy I did catch a, a fish one. though. I caught one bigger than you. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. But no, you didn't. Oh I have a goodness, picture. Guys. guys, has anyone else been married long enough where like the memories at the beginning begin to become like no, fade? I know. And you're like, I don't know. I know you didn't catch anything. I was the one to catch it, but it was illegal because no. it was so small. We both caught fish. Both oh, of ours right. were wrong. No, you're right. We, yeah, we, like we. I have a picture. You're yes, right. and yours was minuscule. Yours was literally <laughs> the size of like a goldfish. No, was, it was bigger than that. You used it's like th- the size of a baseball. No, you used a three prong, or as locals say, a tree prong. Uh, and basically, the three prongs were barely even big enough to catch it. <laughs> okay, I will say, underwater, the fish look much bigger. Than you know, when I used they to come think that, but I'm actually, water. yeah, but I thought it's the opposite now because I agree. Really? Yeah, it's that's okay. Um, I used to think that, but I think, um, yeah, lately I've actually thought the opposite. But I think that's because when they're farther down in the water, they look small, but when you swim down, they look bigger. You well, know? that's the thing. I never swam down. Yeah, all that to say. I'll just say Jeff likes to master every something every year, and this year is the year of spear no, fishing. That's a little too intense because I went because <laughs> spear mastering spear fishing. Okay, well is maybe like, I know, but mastering I'm, is no, in what like I would say you is excel I'm, at it. You not even learn, that. You I watch. That. You go deep, 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 deep down into YouTube. Yes, I'll say you that. You study that's fair. for hours every night, and I start like getting into it. Yes, at a beginner level. You buy level, though. all the equipment. Some of the equipment. All the equipment. <laughs> but I would say at a beginner level. So like, yeah. So all that to say, five years ago, I went for the... F- or No, that way longer than that, actually. We married... 10 years Almost ago. 10 years ago, I went for the first time with you. Um, and yes, I ended up losing that spear. That was hilarious. And I had to buy another one. And you hardly had any money. Yes, I had like 50 bucks in my account and a new spear cost like 40 bucks to replace it for your youth pastor. But man of integrity. I tried, I know. So I was left with 10 bucks. That was fun. Um, but what was I going to say? What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So then I got into it. Then, you know... I'd gone here and there and then uh, like a f- 
couple years ago. Uh, I, I went and took a spearfishing class, and that really did give me like the bug. But spearfishing is hard because you kind of have to go with someone for safety and stuff like that. So it's a little difficult. So like, it's just not always like you can't just like go and do it when you want. But then recently during this Corona stuff, I've gotten more finally took like the dip of like, I'm going to kind of really try to practice, <laughs> do like the skills at a beginner level. Like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm a noob. And I'm just trying to like, you know, catch us some dinner. So if you follow us on Instagram, you saw that. That was fun. So I'll just say monumental 48 hours because yesterday I finally caught. It's very difficult, guys. Even like there's a really good YouTube channel guy I watch named Ryan Myers. Uh, he's like a professional free diver and spear fisherman. He goes all over the world. And he's even says that like Hawaii fish are the smartest and the smallest. So like it's a very hard place to like get something that you can big enough to eat for dinner. You know, I think a lot of people think like, oh, you're going to go spearfish and you, you're you going to come up with this huge ahi tuna or like this huge, you know, if you're in Washington, Alaska salmon or something, you know, it's like, no, no. Dinner here is like a fish that's like 10 to 12 inches, you yeah. know. Um, so and that's really hard to get. And so I finally landed that yesterday with because Shane. Shout went, out to Shane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're listening, uh, hooked me up. Just gave me a couple tips and pointers. Took me out. To um, a really cool. Yeah. Secret spot, secret which I'm not going to say. But uh, but yes. Finally got a legit fish. what kind of fish. fish was it? Uhu, which is also a parrot fish. And they're called it a parrot fish because they have a, a cool beak. beak. Yeah. Like a parrot. So it's super fun. So that was yesterday. And then today, I wouldn't know if I would, I don't know if I'd call this monumental. Well, it is because it But is. I, I ran. He ran, folks. And I haven't ran since like college. You so. haven't run since that same trip when you caught the fish. And yeah. I was a runner and I was like, let's go <clears> running. And I had this like dream of oh, Jeff's going to wake up with me every morning and we're going to go run together and have these heart-to-hearts <laughs> and then come back and have coffee. And he literally was like, I hate running. I don't want to run. And so finally I convinced him. And we went to my favorite spot that is on the beach and we started running and he just took off. He like sprinted. And then he passed me. It was three miles. He passed me on the way back and he was like, he just wanted to get it done with as yes. soon as possible. You like, wanted well, to go that as like a special. Ideal at all. You wanted to run. To, yeah, we totally had totally. That was like that was the writing on the wall of what our marriage would be like, and it has <laughs> been, and it has been that we that like we didn't communicate at all. You said let's go well, for I mean, a run. I think our marriage is okay at communicating. Huh? We we communicate okay in marriage. Yeah, we know we communicate. Yeah, yeah, that's not what I'm saying about. Yeah, yeah. We communicate great in marriage, but I'm saying, but it was kind of like our when we don't communicate. It usually yes. is on two different yes. principles, and yeah. this and this one showed that. And so, yeah, it was literally um, that to a T of like we didn't communicate, <laughs> uh, and so you had a certain expectation, and I had a certain expectation. Your expectation was, oh my goodness, this is gonna be really idealistic, and we're gonna have a date and kind of run together, and you know, maybe there'll be a, like a candlelight lunch in the middle of the run, and no. maybe we'll like you know, and all that. And I'm like, I hate running, uh, you know. I don't, this isn't about the relationship. This is about, about what is most efficient. Yeah, this is about just getting it done. You want to run? Okay, let's check it off the list. So I'm going to run as fast as I can to just be like, boom, we're done. Can we move on? And so, so yeah, I literally just dipped and ran. Anyone else like that? Let us know if you are like that. Um, that was funny. I remember that. And I still married him. Thank you, so, babe. Thank you. There's that. Anyway, but so he hasn't today. ran since. Yeah. And lo and behold, today. I mean, I've ran at the gym and stuff, but yeah, I haven't gone outside and just ran true. around. Yeah. Like for yeah. treadmill and a few stuff. Minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do like a mile at the gym. But yeah, I haven't like ran, ran for a while. So that was fun. But okay, we need to get in some content for today. We love you guys. We could just talk shop all day about funny things and life because that's who we are. And it's the real life podcast. <laughs> um, okay, so let me pull up this graph. So I want the episode today, and I want to get some of your reactions. We can talk through this. Yes. Um, about four or five days ago on Instagram, I posted this chart, this graph. It was a really good graph. I'm not too surprised by this because I've seen this other places, even actually the places that quotes i've seen some of these but i thought it was a really good aggregate is that the right word where it's kind of sourcing a bunch of things all in one place to see the trend so what it is is you know i don't know exactly how to share this with you guys so just visualize but um because it's just a tweet so i'm just like i don't know how to send you guys there um but basically what it was it's a it's a it's a graph and it's showing the percentage of americans with any religious affiliation in the last 120 years. So from so the beginning of the graph is 1900 and it goes all the way to 2018. The top of the graph is 100% and then the graph goes to 65%. So it's talking kind of like in the upper half. Um, and back in 1900, like it was like 96, 97%. Were what? Oh, sorry. Religious, any religious affiliation. Okay. Any. In America or the world? Uh, Americans. Okay. Um, then in like the 50s, it's down to like low 90%. And then it starts trending downwards probably in the 60s or 70s. And then it just literally, at least from the graph, just like takes off a cliff in like 2007, 2008. So like a decade ago, maybe 15 even years ago. And then now it's depending on which one you're reading because it sources like nine different surveys. 
So that and they all match, meaning like there's the Gallup poll, the you know the Pew Religious one, uh, Public Religion Research. There's a bunch of ones, and they're all and they all have done their own research, and they're all trending the exact same way. So like it's fact basically. Um, and we end up basically down towards 70%, which you would th- you say like, yeah, that's a majority of some, but this is not talking about Christian. This is just any religious affiliation. And personally, like if you really kind of read the article and know what this is talking about, it is dropping off a cliff. Meaning what this graph is showing is a drop of 25 to 30% of religious affiliation in the last 20 years, mm. which is massive just for like, just from a sociological perspective, right? Mm. Just like one entire generation is like, that's millions and millions of people, right? Hmm. it's not like study it's it is just a a right off falling off a cliff um and so i just posted that and just kind of said i just said like oh this is interesting and i think it's interesting because if you're a follower of jesus you have to be up on this stuff because you Hmm. need to know where who you're speaking to every christian is a missionary every christian is on mission every christian is an ambassador or a diplomat of jesus for his kingdom and his gracious reign and rule by themselves but also in the community they're a part of as the ecclesia and the church um, and you can't do that well if you don't know like where you're living. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think, and, and so then I put this little line at the end. I kind of just summarized those thoughts on an Instagram story. And at the very end of the caption, I think I said something like, um, we need to stop offering 1990 solutions to 20, 2020 questions and 2020 problems. And that was just something that I've, I've always kind of thought like in that little, like, I'll, I'll explain that in a little bit and we'll unpack that. Um, but it's I so I never know like what will resonate and that like a bunch of people just were like oh that's interesting what do you mean by that or talk more about that and so I was like oh I didn't know that was anything special but before we jump into maybe that what does that just that graph do for you where do you think about that how does that hit you are you surprised not surprised um yeah um I mean I think I want to hear more from you I'm not surprised but I'm also wondering I'm like hmm did something happen in 2008 2007 that would cause that more I mean, it started dropping back in like the 70s. Which is interesting because wasn't that during the Jesus movement? Yeah, but that didn't reach a national level. That was like a pocket of like California. Oh, really? I would say that. I oh. mean, it sure certainly, I thought it certainly like, went national at some level, but I don't feel like the Jesus movement California. was enough to tip the scales of like True. religious affiliation from like 350 million people. Yeah. Does that make sense? Right. Like a lot of Christians can trace a big right. spike there, mm-hmm. but I don't feel like it was big enough. And this, I could be wrong here. I don't feel like it was big enough to to trend anywhere on the scales of like actual like macro national mm-hmm. global. Does that make sense? Yeah. From like a graph perspective. Right. But I think it was more like, and this is the reason we're sorry to cut you off, mm-hmm. why, the, why the Jesus movement was so needed and powerful is it was responding to a time that like, you know, you, like the sexual revolution, mm, um, liberation, some of these other things um, that were happening in the 60s. I think that kind of like our, our view, our, I think I think the the westernized ideal vision of freedom and autonomy meaning I which is the 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 idea of like I need the the, the biggest pursuit in life is to be the most free and the worst thing in life is to have any limits. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's been true for like 200 or 300 years that is the western liberal yeah, experiment right. but I don't feel like it got fully realized until like the 60s. Mm-hmm. Meaning I think the 60s was finally the moment yeah. just because of a cocktail of different variables that that finally reached fever pitch and just like was achievable on all scales Mm -hmm. and the 50s and 60s that's another interesting point the 1945 to 1960 was probably one of the most economically booming and successful Mm. 10 to 15 years in all of human history across all countries oh really yeah like it was like we just after the war yeah we basically just flourished and like just economically that's where the creation of middle class came some other Mm -hmm. things like just a boom economically so i think that's another part of it i think that there's this weird relationship between that and then us so so then part of that is all of us can live free and individualistic because now we're so rich we don't need anyone Mm -hmm. right you don't anyone like 200 years ago you couldn't survive by yourself you can't just you know a thousand years ago you can't just be like oh i want to be free and go out on my own you have no property you have no cattle you know like you will die (laughs) you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um but when everyone's super wealthy enough, anyone can do that, right? right? That's part of it. Then I think the sexual revolution, the freedom, like these th- ideas of freedom and stuff with the economy, I think all that combined mm-hmm. then allowed the religious stuff to take a huge hit because you yeah. don't need God. Right. You don't need what he offers, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So interesting. But keep going though. I just wanted to- Well, I just was to say then on the other hand, I'm not surprised at all because I remember even like 10, 15 years ago, no, even yeah, 15 years ago, I went to Europe. And I remember they just were so far ahead of it. 
in the fact of like being much more liberal, much more anti-God. And so I remember just thinking like, hearing like, this is where our country's going to be. You know, like Europe is yeah. always ahead of I us a little like bit. Yeah. And so, and I think it's still like that. They're still ahead of us, but it doesn't surprise me then to hear that America is so much, you know, less religious. How I don't know how yeah. you say that, but just anti-religion. Totally. Yeah. And this is like super macro, meaning like it's not even doing, you know, certainly not separating certain religions. And then within that, it's not separating denominations. It's just kind of like religious affiliation. And so like Barn and stuff like this call these, I think they call these what the nuns, like you basically like none, no affiliate. Like when you ask what religion are you? Like there's a, there's a, there's a category of people now that didn't used to exist that just is none. Right. You know, N-O-N-E, none. So that's fascinating. You know, not N-U-N because then that would be a religious (laughs) revival. (laughs) Uh, I'm a, I'm, that's a dad pun right there um <clears throat> yeah so i think and then so then what i was so then but all that to say you just have to be i i don't think that's any cause to fear Mm-mm. i don't think that's any cause to be anxious at some level and this is partly my personality and you know even i can see this all throughout even my life too like i went to a college where i was like there was like four christians you know and i loved it like i thrive in environments where it's very um how would you even say that like you know whose team everyone's on and like right. and they're and they're really on that team. There's no mm-hmm. fake and there's no wrong jerseys, <laughs> right. you know. I like those environments. I thrive in those environments. Some people don't, but um so I don't think there's anything to be anxious of or anything to be afraid of or whatever at all. In fact, I do actually think there's a lot of benefits to this happening because there's no way anyways, just like in regards to like the power we see in scriptures of what it means to be a Jesus follower that like you know, 90% of people that say they're religious are that anyways. You know what I mean? Like, right. like there's no way, like there's a, there's, there's a difference between people that check a box and say, I'm a Christian or I'm religious versus like the remnant of actually Jesus who actually really represent this. Like they're like, they follow him. They're like him. They listen yeah. to him. They talk mm-hmm. to him. They're, they, you know, his re- gracious reign and rule of the kingdom comes down on them in their community, in their life, in their neighborhoods, um, in full trust and obedience and submission. But so to me, I don't feel like we're actually losing a bunch of people. I feel like it's a little bit of like, I, I almost joke that like for most of human history, most cultures have been two circles, right? You either are a follower of Jesus or you're not, right? Mm-hmm. And usually that scenario is the followers of Jesus are always the minority. Right. Like that's always true, mm-hmm. right? It's really rare for that circle to ever be bigger than the other circle. Now we're in a weird culture because in our culture, we're like, categorically speaking and historically speaking, we're one of the first cultures where that circle is bigger or what has been bigger, sorry, mm. than like the secular, you right. know, or the non-Christian. Um, it's shrinking, obviously. And then what's even weirder is we have a third circle. So I feel like we have like a circle of followers of Jesus. Then we have an outer circle outside of that that's like kind of people that just check the box. And then right. outside of that, it's the nuns. Mm-hmm. So it's like we have three circles, which is really unique compared to the the rest of human history. Yeah. And even then, those circles are bigger than, you know, different scales. So I just think mm-hmm. all that to say, I think the next 20, 30, 50 years, this trend will continue to go downwards. And I think all it will do is just more make visible the true remnant. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you still have to be like mindful. Like we don't want that to happen. We want people to like, you know encounter him and grow and multiply and disciple. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think so then to the, we can finish the last 10, 15 minutes with this point or this conversation. I think. Well, this is the point that I think was so fire. Thank you, babe. I'll take that. I'll receive that. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I was saying was is, that we can't use 90 methods of evangelism or the yeah. gospel or just like how we reach out and encourage people in today's current. Totally. Current. What yeah. you, what's that word era <laughs> climate culture climate, yeah because yeah. mm-hmm. here's because here's the thing is like when when there's there's when there's such a categorical trend over 10 or 20 years then you need to be doing stuff different than you were in the 90s because it's like mm-hmm. we're in a different world now yeah right it's like trying to use dial up like today like that ain't happening <laughs> right like we're, you know yeah now it's still the internet you know you're still using the internet in the same way like it's still the gospel truth you know you don't like you don't you don't change the right. um oh shoot there's like a really pithy kind of quote to say it of like the, the mode or the methods or whatever, you know, you don't change the message, but you, uh, you change the, the method, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that's true, but like, so one example I'll think, and, but I think we have to really each person in the room, cause here's another thing too. I think each, I think we sometimes macro this too much and flatten it where like, this is different depending on if you live in Texas or Portland, right? Like Texas is a radically different place than Portland. <laughs> yes. Right. Portland's different than New York. 
You know, like you can go on and on. Like you have to know where do you live? What is the climate? What is the culture? And what needs are you meeting? What is, here's another way to put it. What's the story? What is the story that's being believed where you live? Mm -hmm. And how does the Jesus story uh, encounter that story, beat that story for lack of a better term, win over that story and show as a better story, Mm -hmm. right? So one one example I'll give that's really easy off the top of my head of just like how we can't do 90s methods with 2020 questions is like uh, apologetics, Right. right? So apologetics is an easy one, I think, for me to think about because I think in the 90s, you know, you can grow up in a culture where that was just like the bread and butter of Christianity. Yeah. The way you got people into Christ, the way you got people to follow Christ and follow Jesus was to prove it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like prove every last little thing. And you can see this in the trends at a macro scale. The biggest, most popular books 20 years ago were for highly sure. apologetic. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, evidence that demands a verdict, Mm -hmm. a case for Christ. You can go on and on. Phenomenal books too. So I'll clarify in a second what I mean by this. But I don't think we are an apologetic culture anymore. Meaning, Mm -hmm. I feel like there's way less ROI on that. Yeah. So I think in the 90s, we were a highly legal, forensic, intellectual atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Now I think that is not the currency of our culture. Yeah. Like we have not, because it's not just 20 years has gone by, but it's 20 years with the internet and the smartphone. So like a hundred or 200 years has gone by. Like we are, we don't realize. 30 years now? Yeah. But I'm just saying like there's like a revel, they call it the internet and digital revolution for a Mm -hmm. reason. Like it is, we are living in a different world. Mm -hmm. And I think what that's done is we now have a different currency. I don't think the currency is facts anymore. I think the currency is story. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't think millennials, I don't think, you know, our peers, our generation, people below us, I don't think they're moved anymore by facts. I think people are moved by story. Yeah. Like they're moved by something that compels them, that touches their shame and their guilt. Mm -hmm. Um, Something that calls them into a new name, something that tells them and gives them a greater story because the individualism has so sucked us dry when in the 90s it hadn't. Mm -hmm. I think in the 90s it was still giving us blessing. Mm -hmm. So now people want something greater. Mm -hmm. I think they want something higher and you have to tell them a better story and give them a bigger story. So I know it's just like, but but here's the thing, but are ch- apologetics still important? Yeah. Yes, right? I would almost say apologetics are like the backstop, mm-hmm. right? When before they were almost like center stage. Right. Right, you still, so here's the thing too, is like um, apologetics allow no holes to be drilled into the boat so the boat s- doesn't sink. But I think before they were seen as like the whole full meal deal. Mm-hmm. When now they're just more seen as like, make sure that your holes are plugged because <laughs> yeah. they are because the like those things are true. Like the gospel and the resurrection and some of these things have been profoundly uh, shown to be true, to, to be tr- like, you know, N.T. right stuff on the resurrection, some of the stuff with the scriptures, like it is, the evidence is pretty mm-hmm. absurd in mm-hmm. how amazing it is. Right. But I think that's more the backstop now, not the thing that compels you into him. Do what would you, what, how that, would you react No, no, that? I just, I've. I'm more learning in this podcast, but do you think um, part of that too is because truth has Mm. been so not even watered down. It's like, it's not, what do you call that? Relative. It's not relative, but it's also like people don't really believe in truth anymore. They're kind of like, whatever you believe is good for you. Whatever I believe is my, like this is my truth and that's your truth and they're different, but they can both be true. Mm -hmm. And so then I think if that's the, tell us of our culture oh big word yeah yeah you can't then reach people by starting with that because to them mm. it doesn't it just it, it falls on deaf ears it's like yes. not or really, it it's not like, really important yes oh you nailed but it but if nailed you it. but yeah. we um are so broken and so longing for a good story that if you can get to the heart and to like, and because I think with the um, technology revolution, it has caused us to be so, what do you even call that? Not isolated, but like we're so longing for people to really know us. Yeah. And they be don't seen. because the screen can only show totally. so much that when you can really reach in and get somebody's like, inner heart totally that's when jesus is like so real to them yeah oh that's you know? so good but I, no i think you nailed it you're so right that like yeah we're the, back the in the 90s it was truth. like it, it was black and white yep. like what is true i want to totally. know it's true i'm gonna follow it's true and so then but, speaking into that with enough from an apologetic lens kind of takes you to a place then of like oh it's the it's evidence that demands a verdict you're yeah, right you know yeah when now you're right it's like now it's almost like people would just go oh 
cool. Well, right. you know, like right. sounds good, but I'm I'm still good. <laughs> you know, right? Yeah. yeah. Or like that's cool that you believe that, but there's holes here because it doesn't line up with yeah. my story. Yeah, and, and just so, because it's not. In my, I do feel like two people are that you have to know what's what's culture's currency at any given time, and mm-hmm. I do think our culture's currency is emotional. Yes. Uh, compellingness. That's not mm-hmm. a word, but like st- our culture's currency is 100% built on feel, mm-hmm. which a way to a way to speak to that is story. St- we 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 have so again. The, the, that's what I love about the scriptures and Jesus is he answers it all. Right. If you want the facts, you get the facts. Right. Right. But it's also the greatest story ever told that gives you the most compelling message mm-hmm. of all time. Mm-hmm. So like he, he, it's so deeply. He's like a diamond that every facet, when you turn it, shines a little different, you know? Yeah. Um, but I just think like, you know, you look at that graph and you look at that trend as we wrap up and you have to realize you, you, you're you just not really doing the most help if you are, again, going back to methods that... And now if you're talking to someone who you can clearly tell that would clear up, because I do think there is some people like that still that I run into. Oh, of like, for sure. You know, that you can tell like, oh man, like they think that this is just so unworthy to be trusted, mm-hmm. you know, and that's like a huge hang up. Mm-hmm. So then let's talk about that. Yeah. Really what this this whole message is, 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 but I do think there's a macro level where our culture has changed. Definitely. We are compelled by different things now. We speak mm-hmm. a different language. We have a different currency and we care about different things. But I think you nailed it. You're so right, actually, that like it's such a fascinating culture to be in where like people almost don't care what's true. They care just how does it make them feel? Exactly. How how does this make me feel? But I think this um, conversation is so encouraging because, because I don't necessarily think any of us, at least most of us that are our age anyway, aren't sitting around and like, oh man, I feel like I can't reach my friends because I don't know enough apologetics. I should like take a course or whatever, or are frustrated with apologetics. I think just having this conversation is like a light bulb of like, Oh, of course. Like, of course, God's story is so much Mm -hmm. better. So how can I, as myself, my individual self, where I am, tell a better story? And like, how can I reach hearts? And I feel like that just gives us a bigger picture of a kingdom minded picture of like, okay, what is my purpose? How do I share God's greatest story to those that he's placed in my life? Yeah. Well, even like thinking about that too, like, but that is a higher calling at some level, because I do think again, because we're so inundated with hypocrisy, politicians, some of these other things are, you know, I've heard someone say like our millennials BS meter is through the roof. You know, Gen Z's BS meter is through the roof. I mean, like we're like our D again, one of the highest currencies in our culture is authenticity, Mm -hmm. which is also why we've talked about last year. I think the dark sign of vulnerability podcast, like people actually use that and manipulate that poorly. Uh, And I think people kind of toy with that on a social media way to actually kind of gain influence. That's a whole different episode. But um, because it's such a high currency, that like, man, just if you can really live a truly authentic life mm-hmm. that like lines up with what you say and also what you follow says in general, that is so compelling to people. That's so true. And they, I, you know, and I think because and maybe I'm wrong here, but I just think back even say like 40 years, so many people said they were religious and then they like behind the doors, it was a terrible experience oh yeah or didn't and, vote for the civil rights movement or, or weren't on board yeah we're on the wrong side of that or, totally yeah or like just like the life does not line up it with doesn't what actually line up scriptures. and so i think because we are such a um however you said it our bs meter is up the roof like yeah. we're not going to believe and follow a religion where the people are hip- hypocritical <sighs> yeah and i you know and so i just think totally if we can tell a real story with our lives and really yeah just be the same person that people see behind the screen then um i love that guys this is a little bit random plug but the letter to birmingham jail martin luther king jr if you have not read that letter i know it's i don't feel like it's totally applicable to what we're talking about but it actually is it again slower letter to from birmingham jail from by martin luther king jr i read it probably every year just when i see it come by during mlk day i don't know how long it is probably like five or ten pages Not too long, but man, is it so profound and compelling on this point of like him saying like, you know, he he just, I mean, his imagery is incredible. What does he say? He kind of uses imagery as of like, uh, you know, people writing bounce. We've kind of moralistically written bounce checks. Like we've said one thing, but you Mm. you know, like kind of hold true to what you say, basically, you know, like if we're all created equal and stuff like that. Um, And then he talks to the white moderates and the white, uh, you know, evangelical moderates that or actually, he says sometimes just as much of a problem as the people who are, you know, super highly hateful and bigoted. And it's just, 
I can't go in. If you haven't read it, you just need to read it. I'm sure a lot of us have in college and in high school and stuff. But uh, I know it's a random place to end, but just go read it if you haven't. But man, this is going to be a fun episode to talk about on social media. So when this comes out on Thursday, I'll try to remember doing an Instagram post like usual. And I love, love, love when you guys hop in those comments. Those are some of my favorite posts every week. And you just kind of say what you thought, what stood out, what you enjoyed, what resonated and kind of like questions and stuff like that. Um, so I'll try to remember to do a post on Thursday because this will be a really fun one to hear what people think because I'd be mm-hmm. interested to hear yeah. what they say. But any final thoughts? My only final thought was next time we need to have coffee and donuts. Ah! <laughs> well, here's the thing. We record two episodes at a time. This is the first episode. The next episode we're recording after this. I'm just basically saying for the people watching next week, we won't have coffee and donuts yet because we're true. still shooting the same time. That's so true. next session, a couple weeks from now, we might have coffee and donuts. Doesn't so, that sound good? It does. Yeah. It does. All right. Love you guys. Bye.